Thank you. Good morning. I start each of these meetings the same way, and I start it that way because I, I truly mean it from my heart. It's a privilege to continue serving as your first vice president and your national safety coordinator. And during this update this morning, I'll share developments in the ALPA's Air Safety Organization safety, security, and pilot assistance efforts. And I'll also touch on the strides that we're making in ALPA PAC. But first, please indulge me for a moment. As I read all of your Labor Day messages, I was struck by the role our pilots have played in advancing the labor movement. I know we don't talk about that much. But whether it's negotiating contracts with livable wages and benefits, or all the good work our ASO does to promote and protect our pilots' working conditions, which, by the way, advances aviation safety and security for everyone, it wouldn't happen, make no mistake, without leaders like you. It's an excellent reminder of the societal significance of our work and the realization that when we work together as one, we can achieve our goals and advance aviation. Our motto this year at the Air Safety Forum is true for all of ALPA. Our union is powered by pilots, and the ASO, the Air Safety Organization, is a prime example. Over 400 talented pilot ASO representatives personify ALPA's credibility, respect, and prestige, building upon ALPA's very bedrock, our motto, schedule with safety. And they're supported and complemented by a full-time, top-notch staff. And just for a moment, <clears throat> this is very rare that we have these individuals here. Captain Chuck Hogeman, chairman of our safety in ASO. Would you stand up, please? Captain Wolfgang Koch, chairman, security, please stand up. Jerry McDermott, captain, pilot assistance. You're looking at the bedrock, the three pillars of support of this association. You're not, I'm not going to give up on you either, Keith. Keith Hagee, stand up. Stand up, please. Director of Engineering and Air Safety. Ladies and gentlemen, I am here to tell you that that is a bedrock team. That is the supporting pillars of this association, please. And supported by the rest of the staff, a round of applause. I had to pay tribute to them. I've been working them, with them now for a little over a year and a half, and it's, it's been an extraordinary experience. And I am continually, continually impressed by the professionals within the ASO. When we speak to government and industry leaders about matters of safety, security, and pilot assistance, our voice is heard loud and clear. Why, you ask? Quite simply, because we are the best at what we do. And we need to remember to remind our members of this. We have to do that because their work and how it's advanced aviation and how it's made our jobs more safer and secure has made all the difference in the world. This summer has been an adventure to be certain. The 62nd Air Safety Forum successfully highlighted our issues to the aviation industry. Nearly 700 people registered for this year's four-day event, and many more viewed it online, one of our largest crowds in years. The discussion drew good media turnout, including reporters from ABC, the Associated Press, Aviation Week, C-SPAN, and the Wall Street Journal. We were honored to host government and industry officials from the United States, Canada, Europe, and Asia, all with the mission to promote, defend, and advance the safe and secure skies for everyone. So let's, let's talk for a moment about a few issues. The safe integration of UAS into the national airspace is a primary focus of, for us, as everyone here knows. Our ASO representatives successfully defended ALPA's pilots' interests on the Micro-UAS Rulemaking Committee formed to help establish safety, performance-based standards, adding detail to the present set of new 
small UAS rules that apply to commercial operations. Micro UAS are defined as aircraft weighing no more than 4.4 pounds. And the rules debated now will define how micro UAS will operate safely over the public. In that body, we rallied with the rest of industry to enhance Part 107 standards for these aircraft. Honestly, we didn't get everything we wanted as far as regulating hobbyists. Congress prevented us from doing that. Or making sure that there are training qualification requirements for pilots who fly these commercial aircraft remotely. But we will continue to advocate for stronger training and experience requirements for hobbyist pilots. As far as the large UAS arc is concerned, operations of UAS aircraft weighing more than 55 pounds, we're nearing completion. And our UAS team, led by Jim Paula from FedEx, has done a truly outstanding job. Now, next gen. Next gen implementation marches on. The FAA has recently announced some progress in this area, from Datacom to a green light for modernizing the Southern California airspace, including 99 new satellite-based procedures. Safety issues and improvements continue to be discovered by pilots and engineers with data provided from ASAP and FOCA programs. The melding of these programs with other sources is a process we call data fusion, essentially supercharging the effect of these vital programs. The resulting recommendations, make no mistakes, and the enhancements will no doubt save countless lives in the years to come. So I always like to throw a question out there. So here's the question, and they've heard it before over here on the, the dais. Anyone here in the room know what the leading cause of accidents or hull losses is? Anybody take a stab at that? OK, what do you got? What? Loss of control. Close. I, I'd count that. Mm -hmm. Loss of control. OK, so with that in mind, with the FAA mandate that UAS airlines must provide their pilots with upset prevention and recovery training starting in March of 2019, ALPA is once again leading the charge. We're ensuring that the training includes a reasonable sample of upset scenarios and recovery techniques that adequately prepare a pilot for the unexpected. In addition, the ASO, in coordination with the Communications Department, produced an excellent educational video on the basics of this training that highlights ALPA's involvement with the FAA's industry's stall stick pusher working group. We're also educating our pilots on aviation security through initiatives like our Street Smarts video series, which informs line pilots on how to remain prepared and ever vigilant. The most recent addition focuses on the threat posed by improvised explosive devices, or IEDs, and is available to view on the ALPA website. Our pilot assistance group has been quite busy these days, working on a number of occupational health issues, including discussion of onboard fume events and aircraft and equipment sanitation. This group has also engaged our members on the Zika virus threat sharing travel advisories and the CDC's recommendations on how best to handle the virus. Most recently, we encouraged pilots to download Travwell, an app, it's a new app from the CDC that includes this information also available on our, web, on our website. We focused on pilot fitness as well, as Tim mentioned before, and in June, participated in the release of the FAA's pilot fitness report where we promoted the good work of our ALPA Pilot Assistance Group's many world-renowned programs. Make no mistake here, ladies and gentlemen, we are, ALPA is recognized as the leader in pilot assistance programs, and you'll be hearing a lot more of that in the future. All of this work, the meetings, research, collaboration, could not be done without the energy and the devotion of our pilot representatives. It's due to their inspiration perspiration, and dedication to safety and the profession that ALPA continues to be the authority in our industry. And not only among our industry partners, but to the decision makers on Parliament and Capitol Hills as well. And speaking of which, as promised, let's talk a little bit about ALPA PAC now. I want to begin with a quote by the ancient Greek statesman and military leader Pericles 
who, saw, who wisely said, just because you do not take an interest in politics doesn't mean that politics won't take an interest in you. And in my experience up here in a year and a half, I've got to tell you folks, it is the truth. And I highly encourage you to constantly encourage your members to contribute to the PAC. So with that in your mind, I'm happy to report that our ALPA Political Action Committee continues to grow in strength and lends its support to U.S. House and Senate incumbents and candidates who understand the issues of our professional pilots and the aviation industry. For 2016, we've set a goal of $2 million and over 24% membership participation, and I think we're going to get there. We're pretty close. To date this year, 10,475 ALPA members have backed the pack, meaning we've had 23 0.2% of ALPA members make contributions to the PAC. And I'd like to recognize, it seems like we do this every time, the pilots at Mesa, once again, for their emphasis on PAC participation, with over, get this, 60% of their pilots backing the PAC this year. I mean, that's <laughs> amazing. United has over 35% of their pilots group making contributions, with Delta, FedEx, and Alaska also claiming large numbers. I also want to give special recognition to the pilots at Hawaiian for making the PAC a priority. In the midst of everything they're doing right now, Hoon, good job. They've jumped from 15% participation last year to 22% so far in 2016. So please, continue encouraging your pilots to start contributing to the PAC. Even if it's just a dollar a paycheck, their participation, trust me, truly matters. This election cycle, Alpha PAC has made nearly $2.9 million in pilot partisan political contribution, split 50-50 between Republicans and Democrats. Split 50-50 between Republicans and Democrats. I say that twice because that's a good thing to emphasize with your crews. As a political voice of professional pilots, Alpha PAC works both sides of the aisle when advocating and educating on our issues. So summing up, we've made immense progress, but the work of the ASO will always continue. Please, if you know a pilot who shares my passion for safety, security, and pilot as assistance issues, please let us know. And once again, I want to say thank you to all of you for the hours of work you put in on behalf of ALPA. We would not have the strength we have today without each and every one of you. Thank you very much for your time.